Shalom and welcome to Two Minutes of Torah. This year was entitled Daf Yomi Yevamot Yud Dalid Amid Bet. The Gemara continues with the discussion of Shama and Hillel, how they intermarried, so to speak, between the different groups, even though there are serious disputes regarding Yevamot and the Tzarot and the offspring, what their status was, but they worked together to make sure that Hillel took someone from Shammai who was Mutter, according to Hillel, and Shammai took someone from Hillel who was Mutter, according to Shammai. The Gemara writes about the actions of Shammai Hillel, Emet v'shalom Ayvu. They loved Emet and they loved Shalom. In the previous year we mentioned the importance of Machlok Shem Shemayim. We discussed in the Tzir's introduction to Chumash that Sinat Chinam is that when a person has a rabbi, a has an opinion, and anyone else has a different opinion, he's automatically labeled as a Kofar Napikoros. There's very specific definitions of Kofar Napikoros. And Ramam lists it. In Hechot Shuvah, he talks about who's a Kofar, denies God, denies Tosh Bartav, Tosh Barped, denies Nevoah, there's Kofar Napikoros, there's Min, there's definitions. And of course, they have to be analyzed properly, and only if person, Hashem doesn't believe in God, believes God is physical, then he might be a man. He doesn't believe in Tosh uh, or Tosh then he could be a Kofar. doesn't believe in the Vua. There's very specific definitions for men, Kofar, not because. And short of that, a person has a Machlok, and a Ram has a Machlok with another person, then that's it. So he has an argument, then he might think the other side is way off. It's within the range of not being men, or Kofar, because, then he has to accept it and not use those terms. And I think there's some examples that we need to look at to see uh, the importance of a true machloket in our generation, in the past century, where Shil Hill and Shamrays are still around today. Unfortunately, they're sometimes overwhelmed by others. So we have a century ago, Rav Cook and Rav Sonnenfeld. We all know they had very different views on the, on the Zionist movement. It was before the state was born. They both passed away before 1948. Uh, but uh, they read the writing on the wall and they saw that the Zionists, secular Zionists, are coming to build a Jewish state. I don't know if either one of them would ever think that it would succeed the way it did. But the uh, state was born and uh, years later, and this is what we have today. But Rav Cook had a very positive outlook towards what was going on, and he saw that these secular Zionists, there was something behind the whole thing, and it seemed to be a divine act, the Ashkacha, and Rav Sanfeld did not look at it that way yet. They worked together, they had disputes, but they went around with in Kiev around the country, they had a famous tour around the country, and they had respect to each other despite the disputes. Marcel Ovechik, uh, just a few decades ago, and of Aaron Cutler, Marcel Ovechik was the keynote speaker for the Chinuch and the dinner, and the whole dinner was organized by Aaron Cutler in 1956. And uh, they were very different. Uh, so Levitchik, the head of YU, Yeshiva University, Rav Aaron Kutler would never have such a thing, Lakewood University, Chas Shalom for to do such a thing according to Shita. And of course, Rav Soloveitchik was a, a different attitude towards the state. He already by that time wrote, called Odido Fake. He looked at the state as a great bracha. Rav Aaron did not look at it that way. Rav Soloveitchik had some speakers in the YU that Rav Aaron did not necessarily agree with, whether it was David Ben-Gurion and the Golda Meir. They had differences of opinions. And yet they were able to deal with each other in the most respectful way. Rav Aaron was able to request of the Rav to be the keynote speaker in the dinner. And uh, one should get a hand though, on the text and see the nature of the speaker and a fire in his soul by Irving Bunin. About Irving Bunin's life, there's a copy of the uh, speech that the Rav gave at that dinner. So we'll see the way he spoke about Rav Aaron Cutler. The bottom line is these... Giants, or son of Rav Kirk, Rav Cutler, and the Rav showed us what is a machlokas, the Shem Shemayim. There can be arguments over serious issues, over university studies, over Zionism, over how to deal with non religious Jews and non religious Jewish leaders, and they can still get along and respect each other despite the differences. This must be our model. And anyone who perpetuates the idea, no, 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 we have to be strong in our opinion, you cannot relate to the other side, and of course, maintain that they're doing L'Shem Shemaim, I think that's exactly what we want for 2,000 years. Chazal warned us to see Nesrinam, we keep getting back into it, and uh, we need to somehow pull ourselves out of it, and be able to take those few models, the Shil Shamais, the son of Rav Kook, and the Rav and Rav Cutler. 
and those that be our models are not the ones that go ahead, in my opinion, and just trash the other side and use those terms like Bikoros and Kofar and Min. That to me is not a healthy Machlokas, the Shem Shemaim, unless, of course, clearly the other side is violating halacha, is throwing out halacha, is disputing one of the 13 Yikarmen. That's another story totally. Shalom.